good morning and welcome you all to this session of uh, this course so far uh, we are discussing the shock normal shock and in all those discussions we have made the shock stationary at a locations while the fluid flowing and across the shock there are certain discontinuities in the fluid properties that we have seen now there are situations where the shock is moving sometimes in a flow relative to a flow flow may be rest at rest flow also may be moving which are observed in certain practical cases like in air compressors which we discussed in turbo machines sometimes in the exhaust and inlet manifold of internal combustion engines which may occur due to explosion a shock wave propagates through a medium which may occur in case of fluid flowing in a pipeline we just close or open the valve at the downstream so a shock wave is generated which is propagated or moving to the in the fluid medium in those cases it is easy to analyze the uh, mathematical relations or to analyze the problem with respect to a coordinate system attached to the shock moving with uniform velocity then the entire thing appears to be a stationary shock wave across which there is a change of fluid properties but how these analyses are being made and results are being obtained we have to see most important thing here in this context is to find out the velocity imposed by the motion of the shock wave to the fluid medium so to understand this let us consider a case like this let us consider a case like this rather i write here moving normal shock moving normal shock moving normal shock wave shock wave let us consider a case like this where in a duct a shock wave this is the shock this is the shock wave this is the shock wave let us consider a situation like this that a shock wave is moving in a duct with a velocity of us constant velocity of us and the gas behind the shock that means downstream part of the shock it is at rest there is no velocity v is zero okay and pressure is p1 and temperature is t1 whereas this shock has created a velocity in the fluid through which the shock has passed let this velocity is is create a velocity v let us consider a velocity v okay let us consider a velocity v which is being and it has created a pressure p2 and temperature t2 this is the velocity of flow v that means due to the shock passing over this fluid a velocity is imposed or induced by the shock now this problem if you analyze in a way that this is a picture with respect to a coordinate frame attached to the wall that means a coordinate frame static frame of reference which is at rest now if we attach the coordinate frame on the shock that means if we see this thing relative to the shock it is just like a stationary shock wave normal shock wave that means shock is at rest here that means then it will look like that the fluid with a velocity us and a pressure p1 and temperature t1 approaches the shock and while it goes this side its velocity is reduced us minus v usually this us is higher than v and therefore there is a deceleration in the same direction and this is us minus v and the pressure is p2 and t2 so therefore with respect to the coordinate axis attached to the shock wave this is the picture now if this you make an analogy with the stationary shock then what you see you see that in the stationary shock the approaching velocity is given as v1 which equals to us and this is v2 which equals to us minus v okay then p1 p2 that means section 1 and section 2 okay 
all right then v2 is us minus v so okay now if this is the thing now we if we define the mach number at the inlet that is upstream of the shock okay then what is the mach number now here i can write the mach number m1 as us by a1 where a1 is the acoustic speed sorry a1 is root over gamma r t1 well a1 is equal to root over gamma r this is known as this m1 is us again i am writing a1 is known as ms this is known as this is just a definition shock mach number shock mach number a shock mach number ms okay now what is m2 now that means with respect to a stationary wave so this is the picture so m2 will be the velocity after the shock wave that means us minus v by a2 where a2 is what a2 is root over gamma r t2 clear this can be written as us by a2 which can be written as a1 this is a style of writing a1 by a2 okay minus v by a2 so this v is the v generated due to the passing of the shock wave but in a steady condition with reference to a coordinate frame attached to the shock wave that means if you make the shock wave stationary by imposing a velocity us in the opposite direction to the entire system this is the situation so i am writing in that case the m2 is the velocity that means the max stream a mach number after the shock that is the stream velocity us minus v so this become this one that means this is equal to ms into a1 by a2 minus this is v by a2 is written as m2 dash that means m2 dash is nothing but v by a2 that means this v by a2 is written as m2 dash this is an important parameter so therefore this relationship you have to first of all remember or you have to write that relations that means it happens that a fluid with a mach number m1 given by us by a1 and with a velocity us and p1 t1 is passing through a stationary shock wave and its velocity is reduced that is mach number rather is reduced to m2 which is defined as us minus v by a2 now these quantities are with respect to this problem this is an unsteady problem where the shock is moving and these velocities are defined with respect to the coordinate frame static coordinate frame which is attached to the wall coordinate frame attached to the wall now if you accept this now next part is that if we recall the analysis if we now recall the shock um, relationships just i am writing this in earlier classes in few in few earlier classes uh, uh, we have discussed this thing that the the suffix to is always the so now i am writing the shock relations normal shock relation normal shock just recapitulation normal shock uh, relations relations recapitulation of normal shock relations this equal to this p2 by p1 that means the suffix to as you know is the usual symbol is after the shock and this is before the shock usually in shock more useful relationships are the ratios of pressure temperature density in terms of the inlet mach number inlet mach number is the input parameter so flow is usually specified by inlet mach number so i am recollecting this formula this formulas that we already already deduce gamma plus 1 similarly rho 2 by rho 1 has an expression which is gamma plus 1 m1 square divided by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m1 square similarly we can write t2 by t1 which was all 
deduced earlier this is this 2 plus gamma minus 1 m 1 square if you remember this relationship 2 gamma m 1 square minus gamma minus 1 okay, and divided by gamma plus 1 whole square m 1 square. Now, this T 2 by T 1 can be written also equals to what is T 2 by T 1? A 2 by A 1 whole square. Why? Because the acoustic speed A 2 at this section 2 is root over gamma R T 2 and acoustic speed A 1 is root over gamma R T 1. So, ratio of temperature is the ratio of the acoustic speeds at that state corresponding states A 2 by A 1 square. Another very important relation is there that is the Mach number after the shock which is the subsonic Mach number gamma minus 1 m 1 square plus 2 2 gamma m 1 square minus gamma minus 1. So, at present I recall only this form these relationships again I tell what are those relationships this is the change in the fluid property in terms of the ratio pressure ratio the temperature T 2 by T 1 rho 2 by rho 1 the density and the Mach number after the shock in terms of the initial Mach number. Now, these relationship are exploited to find out a chart where against a Mach number 1 that is M 1 against M 1 against a Mach number M 1 we can found we can find all these properties. Another thing you have to remember with this or as a recapitulation which has been already discussed earlier from the consideration of entropy change as a corollary of the second law. We always tell that m 1 has to be greater than 1 for a shock to occur and m 2 will always be less than 1. That means, the shock always decelerates the fluid approaching the shock from a supersonic one to a subsonic one after the shock. So, this if you recapitulate or you remember now here what happens now this problem this is similar to a stationary shock where m 1 is this one m s and m 2 is this one m s a 1 by a 2 minus m 2 dash or you can write u s minus v by a 2. So, this is our m m 2. Now, what you do if you write the same this replace this you get this that means, instead of m 1 you replace m s that means, in this case for this moving shock wave I can found P 2 by I can find P 2 by P 1 just again I am writing just replacing this in terms of m s that means, rho 2 by rho 1 I am writing little fast because it is just for your taking note m 1 is because m 1 in this case is m s u s by a 1 m s square. So, according to the present nomenclature I write this one and T 2 by T 1 will be T 2 by T 1 will be again same that m 1 is replaced by m s m 1 is replaced by m s that means, 2 plus gamma minus 1 m s square into 2 gamma m s square minus gamma minus 1. So, this is also equals to a 2 by a 1 square. So, this a 2 a 1 related to t 2 t 1 this t 2 t 1 p 2 p 1 these are scalar quantity they are not dependent on the coordinate transformations. Now, the m 2 similarly has to be replaced if you write the substitute equation for this then what will be the equation? this equation will be instead of m 2 this equation we write here m 2 is m s that in our earlier thing that m 2 is m s a 1 a 2 minus m 2 dash square. So, therefore, m 2 square will be therefore, m s a 1 a 2 minus m 2 dash this is the square and that equal to the same thing just we are replacing the corresponding m 1 m 2, where 1 2 is the 
upstream and downstream section of the m1 square minus gamma minus 1. So, this is our m2 at the present moment m s a 1 by a 2 minus m 2 dash. Okay. Now, what happens if we take this equation and if we use the a 1 by a 2, then we get a very important relationship of m 2 dash. Let us do that. Now, let us again write this equation. Let us write this equation again. Now, let this equation is written. You just remember this equation. This equation is written. Um, okay. This equation again I am writing m s a 1 by a 2 minus m 2 dash. I take a square root and I write like this. I think you can see that thing. I write that gamma minus 1 m s square plus 2 to the power 0 0.5 and here 2 gamma m s square minus gamma minus 1 to the power 0 0.5. Now, a 1 by a 2 is what? a 1 by a 2 is the under root of this thing. So, you just see that from your note that as you have taken I am just writing then m 2 dash is equal to m s into a 1 by a 2. What is a 1 by a 2 is under root of that. That means, it will be m s this is a 2 by a 1. That means, a 1 by a 2 is the under root of reciprocal of that. That means, denominator will be 2 plus gamma minus 1 m 1 square to the power 0 0.5 into 2 gamma m 1 square minus gamma minus 1 to the power 0 0.5. That means, numerator will be denominator it is a 2 by a 1 I am writing a 1 by a 2 and under root because I am this is square and now the denominator will be under root gamma plus 1 whole square m a square. That means, this gamma plus 1 Okay, whole square that means gamma plus 1 into m s. Okay, and denominator it will be sorry m s. Very good, denominator it is m s. Very good, denominator it will be m s. Very correct. So, denominator it will be m s. All right. So, m 2 dash is m s into this minus, if you do that, you will get gamma minus 1 m s square plus 2 to the power 0 0.5 divided by 2 gamma m s square minus gamma minus 1 to the power 0 0.5. You can see it very correctly. Okay. Then this becomes equal to what? Then this becomes is equal to m s square gamma plus 1. So, this will be the denominator 2 plus gamma minus 1 m s square to the power 0 0.5. Let me write this 2 gamma m s square minus gamma minus 1 to the power 0 0.5 then minus. So, this one is 2 gamma that means this one 2 plus gamma minus 1 m square 2 plus that means this will be simply 2 plus gamma minus 1 m square that means the same thing 0 0.5 0 0.5. So, if you now clear this thing then the denominator numerator will be what? Denominator will be this big thing 2 plus gamma minus 1 m s square. It is little tedious I know, but you just follow that whether I am doing any mistake or not m square minus 
gamma minus 1 to the power 0 0.5 and now m square gamma plus 1 minus 2 gamma minus 1. So, gamma m square gamma m square is cancelled. So, this is m square and then uh, gamma now if you write this gamma here I make a calculation gamma uh, m s square plus m s square minus what is that 2 plus gamma minus minus gamma m square plus m square that means this cancels that means 2 into m square minus 1 this become 2 into m square minus 1. So, this is one very important deductions that is here I can write m 2 dash I think you can see equals to which is very important m 2 dash why I am writing it is v by a 2. It is not m 2 m 2 is this one m s a 1 a 2 minus m 2 dash this is m 2, but I am finding out an expression of m 2 dash in terms of m s. Now, you see what interesting results we have achieved. Now, you see here what it is given that it is given not the downstream Mach number that means Mach number after the shock with respect to the shock the coordinate respect to the shock, but it is given the ratio of the velocity induced because of the shock in actual case divided by A 2 m 2 dash in terms of the inlet or shock Mach number here m s you remember is u s by a 1 that is is equal to actual m 1 in this case. Now, is a very interesting result it gives. Now, what interesting result that if this if we increase the Mach number let us consider the inlet Mach number is very very high inlet Mach number is very very high that means the flow approaches with a very high supersonic velocity and as you know the strength of a shock as I told you earlier is expressed by the pressure ratio that means the ratio of pressure after the shock to that before the shock and it is a direct function of Mach number I tell you is a direct function of inlet Mach number more is the Mach number more is this ratio that means the strength of the shock is usually expressed by this ratio which is a function of inlet Mach number or approaching Mach number more is the Mach number more is the strength of shock. So, therefore, a Mach number approach a shock a fluid approaching with high Mach number to a shock wave is told as the shock is of very high strength. So, therefore, when the shock Mach number is very high we usually call that this is a shock of high strength. Now, whatever high strength shock comes there is a limiting value for m 2 dash physically. Now, look at mathematically is there any limiting value when m s tends to 0 if I ask this question that when m s tends to sorry infinity what is the value of what is the limit rather m s tends to infinity what is the limit that limit I will now show you. Now, if m s tends to infinity m 2 dash can be written as. So, this type of thing as you know elementary mathematics at your school level when m s tends to infinity let it expressed in terms of 1 by m s that means both numerator and denominator should be divided by m s square this is the standard technique see that whether the limit is there or not. So, m s square means 1 m s I can take here 1 m s I can take here and when it goes within the bracket again m square that means this will be 2 by m square that means this gives directly an indication that there is a finite limiting value the term is becoming free of m s m s by this m s we are dividing numerator and denominator by m s square this m s goes inside. So, therefore, m s square here also 2 gamma minus gamma minus 1. So, beautiful that means this give us an indication what do you want that there is a finite limiting value. So, when m s tends to infinity it is 0, it is 0 and it is 0. So, the limiting value there is a limiting value is root over 2 gamma into gamma minus 1. This is gamma gamma minus 1 2 and 2 under root and this is 2. So, therefore, 1 2 under root will go up. So, therefore, you see the limiting value that I was telling that limit m 2 
dash or equal to m s tends to infinity limit v by a 2 as m s that means the shock Mach number tends to infinity is not infinity it is square root of 2 by gamma into gamma minus 1. This is a beautiful result and you see that for air for air if we take gamma 1.4 this m 2 dash is 1.8 and that means you can say that in air whatever strength may be of the shock even a infinite strength shock very high strength shock can only induce a finite velocity which will be always less than this corresponding Mach number 1.89. The actual velocity will depend upon the temperature we have to multiply this with a 2 which is root over gamma r t 2. That means velocity is usually specified in compressible flow by the Mach number. So, you can tell for example, in air whatever strong Mach number may be at the upstream of a moving shock this can or whatever rather this way you tell whatever strong shock may be a moving shock whatever strong the shock may be whatever velocity the shock may be moving that the m s u s by a it cannot induce a flow whose Mach number will be more than 1.89 in case of air. So, this is the limiting Mach number in case of air. Okay? Now, next is uh, next we will uh, rather now after this I think we will solve some problem. So, that your all these things will be made more clear by solving the problems before I go to a uh, this reflection of the shock. Let us uh, solve some problems. Okay? Now, problem 1 example 1 a uh, this is the uh, first uh, problem example say shock wave across which just you uh, see this thing uh, problem which the pressure ratio is 1.25. This is not a this is a moving shock a shock wave across which the pressure 1.25 is moving as yes, it is written is moving into still air at a pressure of 100 kilo Pascals and a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius this is the still air. Find the velocity pressure and temperature of air behind the shock wave that means it is simply the application of that how to do it. Now, let us again solve the problem the shock is moving with a velocity is moving into still air and we do not know its velocity let u s similarly that u s and this p 1 t 1 the same problem and then it induces velocity v and p and t 2 p 2 t 2. So, with respect to the shock the problem is with respect to the shock the problem becomes steady with a velocity u s p 1 t 1 and it goes with the velocity u s minus v and p 2 t 2. What are given in the problem p 1 p 1 is not given rather p 2 by p 1 is 1.25 what are the given t 1 is given 15 degree Celsius, P 1 is given 100 kilo Pascal. What we have to find out velocity pressure air behind the shock that means we have to find out V, we have to find out pressure P 2 and temperature T. The first one is the school level thing P 2 because the pressure ratio is given 1.25. I know the pressure P 1. So, P 2 will be 100 into 1.25 is 125 kilo Pascals straight away. But we do not know T2 how to calculate. Now, I have told you earlier that in shock all those relationship we have derived that means for example, if P2 by P1 is known I can find out M1 because P2 by P1 is expressed in terms of M1. Again I tell you that just also be at the beginning of this class. I told you that all these relationships which was derived earlier for example, this important relationship here one can find out algebraically P 2 by P 1 I know I can find out M 1. Okay. So, if I know M 1 I can find out rho 2 by rho 1 T 2 by T 1 but this algebraic calculation sometimes 
are tedious. So, therefore, a table is drawn based on this calculation as usually drawn for different um, cases. That table as I uh, now tell you earlier also I told which is known as normal shock tables. So, this is there just you see how to see a normal shock tables. A normal now I not will do here I will rather do here a normal shock table we just how does it look like you can see in any book normal shock table just I show you probably I told you earlier also normal shock table looks like that in the left hand column these are the different column m1 the corresponding nomenclature you know that is the Mach number approaching the shock with respect to a stationary shock this is the after shock Mach number then this is the ratio of pressure 2 is the section after the shock and this is all the ratios of the static pressure temperature the density and there is a ratio of stagnation pressure also because of the losses shock is an across the shock the process is irreversible so therefore po2 by po1 okay now this there are a number of mac numbers different values starts from 1.00 why because shock does not occur when the approach Mach number is subsonic. So, therefore, it goes some for example 5.00. So, corresponding Mach number all these things are there. So, then if I know the P2 by P1 now you have to see that what are the quantities given in this problem we know P2 by P1 we know P2 by P1 is 1.25. So, if we know P2 by P1 I can find out everything M2 T2 by T1 that means any one of these is known other things are known through the equations. So, therefore, it is not that always m1 has to be known anything has to be known we can find out from the chart. Okay. So, from this chart if you read with uh, p1 p2 by p1 1.25 you will get a Mach number of m1 which is which from normal shock table you will always get m1 and m2 m1 means inlet Mach number m2 means outlet that means the downstream after the shock Mach number 9 and t2 by t1 you get 1.0662. Now, when you get t2 by t1 straight t2 is t1 is given t1 is 15 that means 288 into 1.0662. So, you get t2. So, t2 is 307 k in this case. Now, in your case e m1 is what? m1 is us by a1. Now, what is a1? a1 is root over gamma r t1. So, therefore, us is the Mach number I have got from the table into root over gamma that is 1.4 into r is 287 into the t1. t1 is 15 degree means 288. So, therefore, you straight forward get the value of us if you know m1 already you know a1 root over gamma t1 and you get the value of us. Okay. Now, you have to find out the velocity behind the shock that means this velocity this is very simple to do this what you have to do you have to write the expression for m2 in your case in your case m2 is what is m2 us minus v which you have to find out by a2. So, therefore, you can write v is equal to a2 a2 us minus m2 a2. us is always I know that this is found 1.102 into root over 1.4 into 287 is the value of r into 288 minus m2 which I have found out 0 0.9103 into again a2 a2 is root over 1.4 into sorry 287 into t2 t2 I have already calculated because I know t2 by t1 from the table. So, t2 is calculate 307. So, most important parameter is this we want to know this this comes out to be 55 point two as far as this calculation I know the answer this is the answer. So, this is a straight uh, use of this 
calculate this formula which we derived the analysis which we have made for a moving shop. Now, another interesting problem you see this is a relatively more interesting problem. This problem what does it say? What does it say? A normal shock wave across which the pressure ratio is 1.17 moves down a duct into steel air at a pressure of this is almost the same and a temperature of 30 degrees rest part is little interesting. Find the temperature, pressure and velocity of air behind the shock wave. This part is routine. That means, you can say that said this is the total repetition of the earlier problem with probably difference in the data. Now, next one this shock wave passes over a small cylinder circular cylinder. It is actually it will be here circular cylinder as shown in figure that I will show you the figure. Assume that the shock is unaffected by the small cylinder fine pressure acting at the stagnation point on the cylinder after the shock has passed over it. Now, this is a problem here. Now, this problem if you solve then how you what is the problem? Problem is this one that this is the shock shock and this is a small cylinder. So, shock has started from somewhere else in the upstream it has passed different sections. So, at any instant as the problem tells when the shock has passed over the cylinder and shock remains unaffected what is the condition. That means, in the entire upstream part of the shock through which the shock has already passed the fluid this has attained some induced velocity v. Okay. Now, let us find this induced velocity v. So, therefore, our case is similar to this. Then our case is similar to this that let this is be cylinder, our case is similar to this. So, u s the same thing u s minus v this is 1 and this is 2 and let this is p 2 t 2. So, p 1 t 1. So, I, I can find everything, but first of all I have to see with respect to the stationary shock what is the give, thing given pressure ratio. Same thing that means, I am having pressure ratio. That means, I can immediately go to the shock table normal shock table and see against this pressure ratio what is my value m 1 m 2. So, this pressure against this pressure ratio the m 1 as found from the shock table is 1.07 m 2 as found from the shock is 0 0.936 okay. and T 2 by T 1 as found is 1.046. So, therefore, since T 2 by T 1 is known I can immediately calculate the temperature temperature behind the shock that means, this temperature behind the shock in this case this that means, this temperature T 2 I can find out. T 1 is what? T 1 is 30 degree that means, T 2 is 1.046 into 273 plus 30 that means, 303. So, I can find out this is this equals to 316.9 k. So, I know this and P 2 I can find out how P 2 is equal to this is the school level thing 1.17 it is already given 1.17. So, 1.17 into 105 kilo Pascals. So, I can find out and this becomes is equal to 122.9 kilo Pascals. Now, what I have to find out next? Assume that the shock is unaffected. Oh, before that I have to find out the velocity of air behind the shock. This is again the same thing that m 2 I know that means, m 2 is 0 0.936 is equal to what? u s minus v divided by a 2. Now, a 2 is what? a 2 is equal to root over gamma r t 2 that means, 1.4 gamma r 287 into t 2 because t 2 is 316.9. So, I get the value of a 2. I will just substitute here the value of a 2 m 2 that means, I can write better v is equal to u s minus m 2 a 2 that means, u s what is u s? u s is again m 1 is what is m 1 here? m 1 is u s by 
a1 and a1 is root over gamma rt so us is m1 times a1 root over gamma r t t is 303 minus m2 m2 is 0 0.936 times root over gamma r and t2 that means 316.9 so that is very simple 316.9 you understand 316.9 so therefore i get the value of v that this v becomes equals to some 33 okay this becomes equal to v becomes equal to 39 39.38 meter per second i think it is absolutely all right so it is just the repetition of the earlier problem now the question is this that we have to find out the stagnation pressure now what happens if you see this picture now this cylinder actually here this is the model physically translated but actual problem is this this is the problem as we look with reference to a coordinate frame attached to the moving shock and flow becomes steady and this becomes stationary so actually this is the problem this v we are getting which is 39.8 that means now it is a problem that a cylinder circular cylinder is exposed here another thing is told stagnation point assuming that the shock is unaffected by the small cylinder find pressure acting on the stagnation point on the cylinder after the shock has passed over it and there is another thing which has to be told that consider this flow to be isentropic consider the flow the pressure acting at the stagnation point on the cylinder assuming that the uh, flow is isentropic now if we assume the flow to be isentropic then what happens there is an isentropic flow past a cylinder whose velocity is 39.38 meter per second so we can find out the stagnation pressure before that i have to tell you that if you recall the if you recall the uh, pre, this uh, uh, this uh, isentropic uh, flow relation the isentropic table that isentropic flow relations are unnecessary without going to all algebraic calculations through the algebraic equations of isentropic flow relations i ra rather isentropic flow uh, re isentropic flow table that is normal shock table it is given in a tabular form similar to normal shock table that one column the extreme left column is m then these are the stagnation because here most important part of calculation is the ratio of st stagnation temperature to static temperature stagnation to static all stagnation property respect of density to the corresponding static is the function of the Mach number of flow so therefore if we know the Mach number of flow at that particular location we can find out all these things similarly a0 by a what is that acoustic speed at the stagnation condition to the local acoustic speed a by a star probably you recall these things a star is the area where the sonic velocity is reached that is the minimum area known as throat area corresponding to m1 and this a is the area local area at which we are concerned with and another parameter is theta i told probably earlier that does not come into picture here that will come when we will discuss the expansion wave this is the angle related to the expansion wave this is not coming and that there also the problems are treated as an isentropic flow that is why in the isentropic flow table itself this theta is given this is not required now so now if we know the Mach number at a particular location in an isentropic flow this here Mach number start 0 0.01 0 0.04 like that very small because all subsonic supersonic all labels are there so there will be somewhere one when the value of a by a star will be one these things probably i have discussed earlier so now if we know the local Mach number i can find out the p0 by p t0 by t i can read that everything so here I have to find out the local Mach number. Now, how to find out? Because I know now the actual problem, the cylinder is exposed to this uniform velocity 39.38. So, local Mach number is m, for example, here 
is 39.38 by the local acoustic speed which is root over 1.4 gamma into r into this temperature that means this is 316 that means it is nothing but a2 it is nothing but in our this problem this is a2 so you find out this m and this m if you calculate this m will become equal to i tell you the value which is already calculated by me this m has got a value this m if you find out this m is i tell you just wait i will tell you the value of m this is a problem uh, where the m2 so therefore we take a value of m this m is equal to uh, this is a v2 and a pressure the Mach number is 0 0.11 just I see the calculations only so that you can check 0 point it has been calculated by me earlier so 0 point see that thing. so therefore in the table if you see this Mach number you can find out the value of P0 by P and that P0 by P if you see from the table this also I tell you for this problem is this so therefore you can very well find out P0 is 1.0085 into the static pressure there which is P2 122.9 because the condition prevailing is this P2 so this becomes is equal to 123.9 let me see the value 123.9 as I have calculated already kilo Pascal so this is the value so it is clear that you can find out uh, the value of the Mach number and uh, you can find out the value of the stagnation point uh, pressure okay so this is one very interesting problem now i will tell you something regarding the reflection of a shock wave regarding the reflection of a shock wave okay what is reflection of a shock wave so what is reflection of a shock wave let me tell you what is reflection of a shock wave reflection this happens when the shock wave is moving so moving shock wave analysis we have done reflection of a shock wave now reflection of a shock wave if we have to understand then just how does it happen i tell you the physical picture now if there is a cylinder we have so far considered that it is moving with us okay and it is creating a velocity v and a pressure p2 t2 and this side the pressure is p1 and initial velocity v is 0 and temperature t1 that was our thing that it is moving in this direction so with respect to these things are happening now this is the actual problem physical problem as we are discussing now what happens if this thing is closed at the end that means there is a closed end or the pipe was open suddenly the valve is closed that means the shock wave is moving and the pipe is closed at the end or is being closed by the closer of a valve at the end so what will happen physically you try to understand what will happen this velocity will be induced so long the shock moves now try to understand what happens in reality now when the shock comes here the velocity will be imposed v but after that what happens this is the closed end so at this solid end the velocity will be zero there has cannot be any velocity the velocity cannot penetrate into the solid like that so there will be no normal velocity so therefore this velocity will be zero and slowly in a compressible fluid the entire fluid will attain a velocity zero for an ideally incompressible fluid this will be instantaneous the zero but for a compressible fluid the velocity will first fall here zero and which it will take some time which may be infinitely small depending upon the compressibility of the fluid that the entire velocity will again be zero so this thing is perceived in a way as if the shock wave after reaching there is being reflected back in a way that it creates a zero velocity here is reflected back in a way that usually the velocity it created in this direction v 
again it created a velocity v in this direction in the opposite direction so that the final velocity is zero that means the strength of the shock will be such for the reflected way so that it can create a zero velocity while passing through it so that is the uh, that is the uh, philosophy of the shock uh, reflection of the shock now let us do that reflection of the shock let us do that the reflection now if reflection of the shock is to be understood let us consider not the initial one the shock is being reflected now the shock is being reflected now and we can just consider a case that when the shock is reflected okay and this is the reflection that the reflected shock velocity and here let 1 and 2 if we see that one sorry this is why 1 and 2 I am telling that this can be expressed as we did earlier in this way that this is coming with us p1 t1 so this one and this is 2 this is p2 t2 and this is going with us minus v2 so now what happened so this 2 will now prevail here that is here 2 that is p2 t2 so now now this is p2 t2 i am sorry now this will be sorry sorry this when you will come here so entire thing was then p2 t2 that means 2 when it reaches when it reached here the entire fluid was at 2 so when it is coming here this side is 2 that is p2 t2 i think you have understood and this side is 3 that is p3 t3 and velocity is 0 so this is the reflected shock that means the reflected shock if we analyze you will analyze this way now with the help of the shock tables we can calculate things that means shock will again be reflected back here so this is a typical reflection and under certain circumstances shock will go back again so there will be a repeated movement of the shock so one such reflection of shock problem we will now solve that how a shock moving ultimately moving in this direction in a particular direction ultimately reaches the closed end and backs when it reaches the closed end automatically the velocity becomes zero this is the reality that means this is conceived as a movement of a reflected shock wave with velocity us are such that this velocity becomes zero and the condition which is being created is p3 t3 again it is changed that means from p1 t1 this is p2 t2 the shock this is with respect to the shock then the entire thing will become p2 t2 here also when it reaches here the entire thing becomes p2 t2 pressure temp p2 temperature then again it will be changed to p3 t3 when this reflected shock will pass through that so this is the scenario physical scenario i think that this will be more uh, easily understood if we solve a problem and and this time we cannot i cannot continue because the time is up so in the next class i will solve a problem in relation to the reflection of a shock wave okay thank you close